Three, two, one, exit. There was a time there for a lot. Oh, there's a little bump there. <laughs> Look. From the cauliflower. From the cauliflower. Yeah. Action! Right. Yeah. Here on the island, the local transport. Oh, no, no, no. These veggie patties smell amazing. Oh my god, they're so good. Okay, okay. see ya. There was a time there where I baked whole cauliflower literally once a week. Like I couldn't get enough of it. And I worked out a really cool technique. One of the things that I love about this recipe, if you can find the leaves that come all the way up like that. So if you go to a farmer's market or some sort of fruit and veggie market and you get the, the actual encompassing energy of the leaves, it really protects the entire um, flower when it's in the oven, it gives it more protection from being burnt. This is a great recipe. I have done this so many times. And depending on your oven, right, it could take, I don't know, it could take an hour and a half. It could take an hour, it just depends. I'm not a fan of boiling it. I've noticed a lot of people do that. They, they boil it first. Um, in water or they steam it. Oh, I just, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of that. I th what, what, this is why I don't wash my mushrooms and I don't boil my cauliflower before I bake it. The reason being if I washed um, my mushrooms, I'd wash away all the flavor. And the reason being if I boiled that and steam that to pre-cook it or par-cook it, um, I'm washing away all the natural sugars, in my opinion, in my chef opinion, okay? I'm washing it away and I don't want to do that. Okay, you're gonna need a tray paper, cauliflower, you're going to need some cumin powder, some olive oil, salt and pepper which I have on hand just to my right and you're going to have your oven on around about, now I have burnt this before actually, so depending on your oven um, I would say around about, oh, what do you think, 170? 170, let's try 170. You know, sometimes I've taken it up to 180, sometimes I've taken it up to 200. But let's start with 170 um, Celsius. I'm gonna grab some olive oil and I'm just gonna pour the olive oil over the cauliflower, just not pour, like drizzle. And then I want to do it over this side. Roll it around in that fat. Making sure everything's covered, which it is excellent. And then I want to add some cumin, around about half a teaspoon. It's not a lot of cumin, just half a teaspoon. Depending how big your cauliflower is, this is actually quite a small one. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the salt and pepper station and I'm going to salt and pepper this Treat the vegetable with respect. See how I'm salting it? Getting it all in there, rubbing it on. Same with the pepper. I mean, a lot of people do this with steak, right? They really season their steak well. It's the same with vegetables, they should be treated no other way. All right, into the oven. Preheated 170, just like that. I do at some point like halfway through the cooking is take another sheet of paper and put it over the top. And this just stops it from burning. But I'm not going to do that yet, that's going to be later. So this is going to go into the oven for about 45 minutes on 170 and then I'm going to put that paper on and I'm going to cook it until my fork 
can go through very, very beautifully and with no hassle, like hassle-free fork situation in the cauliflower is what we want. Here am I, stir on the bottom of the tahini. Actually, you gotta do that. Tahini sits in my fridge or on the shelf. I actually like to keep it in the fridge, to be honest. Um, and it just kind of, just gets clunky down the bottom and all the oil on top. Stir it, so that's what I've been doing here. What makes this cauliflower next level is this dressing. And what makes it beyond just a baked whole cauliflower is all the isms that you put around it crunchy seeds that are roasted, um, salted, crunchy cashews, if you have any just crumbled up, you know, in your hands, some, you know, fried onion from the supermarket, this crispy, yummy fried onion um, sprinkled all over it. Oh my goodness, a little bit more cumin, you know, put over it, so maybe some chili, um, some fresh coriander leaves if you have any, spring onion if you have any, that's what's gonna make it next level. So the sauce, it's a sauce I got taught a very, 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 very long time ago in a health retreat. I'm talking early 2000s, right? All right, that's good. Which consists of tahini. Now, I don't really know the quantity, but I would imagine, come on, Cynthia, get your act together. I would imagine a third of a, half a cup, lost me. Ask me's writing this down as I'm making it. Half a cup of unhulled tahini. And unhulled meaning the seed is got all its isms on there and then it's crushed and made into a paste. So about half a cup of that. Got some really nice coconut yogurt. How much coconut yogurt? Oh, I reckon about a cup, last me. Yep. yep, definitely a cup of coconut yogurt. I need a pinch of cumin. It's not a lot, hey, just like a, a nice pinch of cumin. So first thing we need to do is salt and pepper this bad boy. Got quite a large garlic clove. I'm gonna grate it into here. So you want one whole lemon, right? Oh, this is good. This takes a bit of muscle. <laughs> okay. And now we need some maple. Maybe I reckon, let's start with one tablespoon of maple. As I'm whisking, it's getting thicker. Now, at times I've had to add more water into this, but today I don't for some reason. Maybe the coconut yogurt was really runny. All right, now's the time to taste it. Now, what are you looking for? Well, you don't want it to taste like coconut yogurt, and you don't want it to just taste like tahini. You want it to taste it, oh, that's nice. A mix of both, it needs a little bit more. Cumin, just another pinch. Not a lot, just a pinch. That's it. And our sauce is ready. Now, tip, look, it's getting really thick. If you think that it's just too thick and you're not getting this really kind of runny, kind of liquidy sauce, thick liquidy sauce, add a little bit of water and keep mixing. And as you keep mixing, it gets thicker and thicker and then you add a little bit more water. Today, I don't need to, I think it's the yogurt. The yogurt was super thin. Have another taste. Oh my God, that's amazing. Set it aside, wait for that to cook, and then we'll put it together. Next level, baked cauliflower is all the crunchy seeds, the deep fried onions, oh my God. You buy them from the supermarket, right? They come in a packet. Um, roasted cashews, salted cashews, a little bit sprinkle more cumin. If you've got spring onions, do it. If you've got coriander, sprinkle it on there as well. That's what's gonna bring this to the next level. It's been well and truly over an hour, which is totally fine. And this is the point when it comes to, if you steam or boil that whole cauliflower first and bake it, it's gonna be like 35 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever, da 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 da. It's not the point. You don't wash mushrooms because you wash the flavor away. So we don't boil cauliflower because it washes the flavor away. And that's why it takes time. What I did do, like I said in the beginning, was in about 45 minutes or 55 minutes, I pulled it out 
and I covered it with a little bit more baking paper just to stop the burning, um, the oven burning like the florets, like the beautiful flower of the cauliflower, do you know what I mean? And th that kind of helped it steam a bit, which is super cool. You could throw a couple of tablespoons of water in that tray. So you've got the paper, the cauliflower, a couple of tablespoons of water, 45 minutes after it's cooked, then put the baking paper on top and then chuck it back in the oven and that will create some really great moisture and steam the stalk of that cauliflower faster. You can do that, which is a cool chef's trick actually. Um, what else, what else, what else? Like I said in the beginning, I really like that when you can get the cauliflower with the leaves that wrap around it. I find that really protects it. And I actually go really crunchy as well, which is awesome and super cool. Now with this, I threw a couple of weights on the paper, some salt that I've got there, um, which is now hot. So I've got to be careful just to hold this paper down because it was blowing away um, in the oven. Okay, let it rest for a minute. And then we're gonna let it bathe in this incredible sauce that just makes life just lovely. So, and all the crunchiness, don't think it all the crunchiness I said in the beginning of this recipe, which is the, you know, roasted seeds, the roasted nuts, the different types of seeds, the crunchiness of the fried onion. So just stick that on there like that. Okay, I wanna show you something actually. Actually, 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 you want the fork to just go straight through like that. Okay, it's really important. Um, any kind of greenery, spring onions, coriander, parsley, you know, anything you like that you have in the fridge. I just got a little bit of parsley, which brings that greenness to the plate. And now we're just gonna sprinkle everything on. So this is what I do. The seeds over it. This is what makes this dish so delightful is all this crunch. I've got some roasted cashews. If you're allergic to nuts, just use the seeds. I might just crunch them in my hand like this. Get it on there. You want that beautiful bit of parsley. Just get that sauce. And that, my friends, is a really great way, I'm just mucking around with the sauce here, to use up a whole cauliflower, something different, I swear to God. In 2022, I baked this like at least once a week in Australia. And I had those leaves coming out and we just all ate it like a big roast, you know, and we have some beautiful greens on the side, we had some bread, it was delicious. So this is a real moment, this is something that you can do at home, this is very affordable, very tasty. Um, I don't have anything more to say about it except for eat it.